Minister, perhaps you want to respond to the point about national service. I think before I touch on the point of national service, um, you know, here we are talking about sports and how important it is and obviously as sportsmen and we all know the value of sports. But in the overall scheme of things, sports is just one part of life. Just as the others, parents, students, individuals will feel that arts are important or you know, in social work or different things. So, uh, so sports is one thing. When we look at it, when we wear the hat as a sportsman or enthusiast, we champion the cause, but that's one cause amongst many. Right? So what like I said earlier is that we need to set up the whole ecosystem. I think sports school, I think we're quite clear, plays an important role, but it doesn't supersede, I think, the rest of the other parts. I think the tendency sometimes we have is that when we look at one thing, we, we just look at a silver bullet. There's no one silver bullet. It's really a whole series of different initiatives. And the key thing is that how do we coordinate it in a way that's complementary and reinforcing? There will be overlaps, but there are certain things that there are niche areas which sports school will excel, excel in. There'll be some things that the clubs will excel in. Now, bringing this point about um, the different areas of interest, because when we talk, talk about national service, if we are just only interested in sports and having Singapore excel in sports at all costs, then clearly, if you don't have the two years of national service plus NS responsibilities, wouldn't it be easier? It would be, right? I mean, as uh, Mr. Kunalan mentioned, I mean, our girls don't do national service. So does that nat naturally uh, translate to the fact that they will all therefore naturally excel. So I raise that point because for Singaporeans, that part, that's part and parcel of our life and responsibility as Singaporeans, to serve our national service. Now, it certainly is inconvenient in a sense, especially for some sports, perhaps not all, but for many sports, we know that it comes at a critical stage of the development. What happens? I mean, even Joseph, when he defers, it's not his exam from national service, he defers, but at some point he needs to come back and clock up his two years. And Joseph's development will go on for quite a few more years. So that conversation will still need to be addressed at that stage. So it's part and parcel of our landscape as, as Singaporean men that we need to serve because do we think that security and defence is important? Do we think that national service is an important part of the landscape? So if you're given that that's one part of our responsibility, then how do we then organise ourselves so that we can try to see if some balance can be struck? I think that's where the space, uh, the conversations need to be taken. But surely, I think we can perhaps pay a little bit more attention to the possibility of deferment. Uh, it, it's, it shouldn't be given too easily, but I, I'm just wondering whether we are, whether MCCY and uh, SNOC is currently negotiating this matter to come to an understanding with the Ministry of Defence, because there is, there is a downside to it. So now, clearly, this is something that we, we are. Yeah. We have to address. Um, for example, uh, Joseph has been deferred. So there's a question where you draw the line. If you draw the line here, then there'll be some athletes that would qualify. If you draw the line slightly lower, and you have to define where that line is. But this is for deferment. But short of deferment, are there alternative arrangements? I know it's not ideal, right? But could you work out arrangements where training time can still be afforded, individuals are able to take time out? And a lot of this actually could be local. Because actually, if you are able to make arrangements with the local commanders, but sometimes for some appointments and jobs, that flexibility is there as well. well the problem is it, it becomes an ad hoc. So it becomes ad hoc. So it's a bit not so structured. So I think what you need to is then re-look at how important this is. How do you then reconcile with our, our other responsibilities as national servicemen? And then see whether some of these can move from where it is today.